Okay, so tonight on the drive home, um, I had two things uh, on my mind and hopefully I won't be overly distracted by driving uh, and, uh, well, it looks like it already happened. <laughs> Just be too distracted to, to say well what, what I would want to say. Uh, hey, this isn't easy, driving and talking, vlogging, whatever. Uh, well, one-sided conversation, but anyway. Um, I guess the first thing that I want to say is that uh, I appreciate anyone and everyone's uh, prayers um, that uh, I have a good response from a job application that I put in at the University of South Carolina uh, in the sociology department um, basically doing from what I at least from what I'm able to tell uh, doing a job very much like what I did at uh, Columbia International University. Uh, not so much working with doctoral students directly, but certainly working with undergraduate and master's degree students in the sociology department. And um, being that it still touches on um, humanity, uh, studying people and societies and whatnot, um, and being the fact that I am a bit of a Renaissance man, uh, and by the way, that's not a self-proclaimed title. That comes from someone who called me that. <laughs> um, yeah, I have an interest in, in sociology. I'd probably never be a sociologist per se, but um, it certainly is. It touches uh, a lot of places of personal interest in philosophy. So uh, anyway, um, I heard back from the chairman of the uh, department, uh, professor of sociology, and uh, I expect to be hearing about a job interview coming up sometime soon. So, prayers and fingers crossed. Appreciate it. Um, secondly, the other thing that I wanted to think about, talk about, and I guess it's, it's really appropriate considering the times that we're in right now, coming up on an election, and believe me, anybody who knows me enough knows that politics is not one of my things. I do not talk about politics. Um, however, uh, there was a certain circumstance that caused me to think about what I'm going to say in a minute. Um, then I think it's appropriate because I think it applies to politics and what we're doing or what we're about to do in terms of uh, the elections. Uh, regardless of what you f where you fall, I hope that you might find something in what I say uh, to help strengthen your resolve or however you want to put that in terms of the things that you stand for, uh, the people that you vote for, the things you believe in. Um, I guess what, I, what I'm trying to say is, um, and again, this comes out of another circumstance. There's another background story, but I'm not going to tell you that story. Um, but it touches on opinion. Um, and I was doing some reading and doing some studying and discovered that there are probably maybe, I don't know, six or eight different Greek words that English translates as thought. Uh, but none of those words, well, very few of those words actually mean thought. Uh, we do the same thing with love. You know, love has uh, many different words in Greek, but that's not what they mean. But anyway... Um, we're not talking about love, we're talking about thought and opinion. Uh, one of those words that we translate as thought uh, may also be translated opinion. And, and really what, what the word is, it describes a certain action of picking up something and clutching it, grasping onto it. Um, and that is literally what the word says, is to pick up and clutch and hold it. Uh, and we translate that word as thought or opinion. And I really got to thinking about that and um, 
you know, people have many opinions nowadays. Many people have many things to say. Um, but very people, very few people really know why they believe what they believe. Very few people know why they hold the opinions that they do. Um, and as I thought about this, I remembered uh, the scene from uh, a movie that most people nowadays, unless you're from my generation, you have no idea what this movie is. Um, it's an old Steve Martin movie called The Jerk. And it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie where uh, he, Steve is, uh, he's reached, he's become a millionaire and basically he's on the verge of losing it all. And, uh, and he's walking out of his life. He's walking out of, away from his wife and, and everything. And as he leaves, he's in a pitiful state of condition. Uh, he's like, he's wearing his bathrobe and, um, you know, a t-shirt and funny looking boxer shorts and, uh, his his pants have fallen down around his ankles and he's shuffling through the house and he says, I don't need anything. I don't need anything anymore. I'm leaving. Uh, and I don't need anything except this paddle ball. And he picks up this paddle ball and he, and he waves it around and he reiterates, I, I'm, I don't need anything, nothing at all except for this paddle ball and this ashtray. And then he picks up the ashtray. And before long, he's going through the house declaring his independence. And then he doesn't need anything except this or that. And the next thing, he has a chair, you know, and he's carrying all these trinkets. And again, his, his pants are falling down around his ankles. And he's trying to shuffle out. And he's got a teddy bear. And his arms are just laden with stuff. And that's the picture that I get when I listen to many people in the media, when I listen to many people uh, who are very, very vocal about where they stand and what their opinions are, I picture Steve Martin, the jerk, uh, claiming he doesn't need anything. And that's the way a lot of these people come off. They don't need anybody. Uh, when it comes down to it, they don't. They, they're, they're independent. They don't need us. They just want our influence or however that works to get them into their place of influence and their ideas are really nothing and in turn many people hold ideas opinions that they don't even really need that they don't even know why they carry them around they just have them you know I just think of the way and especially being here in the south we see this a lot about the way people interact with one another um not going to open the whole racial thing right now. I prefer to use the term multi-ethnic, but just watching the way different ethnicities interact with one another, and many people don't even know why they do it. They were told, here, hold this opinion, make it yours, and they don't even question it. Um, is it viable? Is it something that... Um, realistically works in the world. I'll give you one example of this. You know, I live in a neighborhood that has a, one of those wonderful HOAs, you know, one of these homeowners associations. And recently a uh, note or something went around on social media, and I'm not on social media, but uh, it was brought to my attention that there was a statement about uh, no work trucks were allowed to be parked outside of people's homes. And the people in the neighborhood went ballistic, you know, like, uh, what, what are workers supposed to do? Airdrop their supplies, you know, in? And, uh, and it doesn't make any sense. It's not a realistic expectation. It, 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 it's not even an opinion. It's just something that doesn't work in the real world. Somebody comes to work on your house... All the tools are in the truck, you know, and those workers have to come and go. They're not going to park, you know, uh, a few blocks away down at the pool or wherever it is they're supposed to park. I don't even know how that would work. But somebody needs to bring those, that such a thing up to say, hey, that no work truck should be parked in front of the... And these are the same people who, hired, who hire people to come mow their yards. 
you know, because for whatever reason, they can't mow their yards. I mean, admittedly, I've been so busy in late this summer where I couldn't mow my yard. I had to hire a guy to come cut my yard. I didn't like it, but I did. But regardless of what I think about it, he had to park on the street. And a lot of these people complaining about these things uh, turn around and hire people who have to park on the street. Makes no sense. Their opinions mean nothing. And this is what I'm talking about. So people are jerks when it comes to holding their opinions. And I guess that's something that we need to ask ourselves. We need to reach a point, and there's no way that we're going to be able to sift through all of them all at once, and we don't expect to, but at least, you know, take some time to think, hey, this idea that I hold, does it really work in the real world? Does it really matter? Does it matter in my family? Does it matter in my work? Does it matter in my situation? Does it matter at all in the world? I mean, th these opinions, does it have any bearing in Africa? Does it have any, you know, it, I don't know, I'm just off the top of my head just trying to take a, a bigger picture look. And again, I think that's part of the problem that we're too narrow, we're too close to ourselves, we, 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 we've shut down and, and think within the confines of self. We can't see outside. We forget that we're part of a greater whole. And I say we because, yeah, I am guilty of it too. So, anyway, uh, things I think about. Uh, again, my apologies for not being able to post so much or write. Hopefully, that will change. Um, at the same time, I'm excited about this job opportunity, but I'm also trying not to get my hopes up. Uh, I'm just coming off of a ten and a half hour day <laughs> uh, working, but uh, hey, these bills are being paid. Well, as the song says, dream on. Dream until your dreams come true. <laughs> uh, just keep doing good. That's the most important thing. Just keep doing good wherever you are. All right. Okay. Until the next drive home.